Hello and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Matt Reynolds, editor of Packaging World Magazine, and I'm here with Paul Jenkins, Managing Director of the Pack Hub. Okay, so the, the first innovation I'd like to talk about today is uh, one which is part of a, a, a growing um, packaging trend area, which is around reusable and refillable packaging. And what we've got here is multinational uh, packaging and paper group Mondi, who have collaborated with the German chemical and consumer goods company Henkel to launch a 100% recyclable and refillable pouches for Henkel's dishwashing brand Prill for, for the German market. It is reported that the pack's plastic content has been reduced by 70% from previous iterations, and it is to be used as to refill an, a recycled PET pump dispenser bottle. Simple and light to carry, consumers can easily empty the packaging without leaving any waste product within due to its ergonomic design. The collaboration benefits both companies goals of packaging all of their products in 100% recyclable or reusable materials by 2025. And indeed, many brands, retailers and packaging suppliers are, are working to that goal for, for the year 2025. So I just really like this as, a, as a, an, an atypical example of a, of a refill execution, clear branding on the front to sort of direct the consumer um, to, to what they need to be doing. They've got the old pack on the front there to help them do that. And a, and a clear message that it's the, that they're saving plastic uh, usage uh, across the top as well. So just like quite a good example to, to get us on the go. Yeah, and that's, uh, I mean, that's a key element that you, you bring up there is is consumer education. There's This is another example uh, from uh, CalCorp um, and they uh, use what's called the bottle for life. And they quite clearly with the messaging um, try and differentiate between the what is called the bottle for life uh, for a reason. It's not necessarily for life, but uh, they aim for at least 100 cycles uh, of use and then refills. So the bottle for life is meant to be beautiful. Um, in this case, uh, my Curie is the brand within CalCorp. Um, you can see that the uh, the dispensers actually dispense soap, hand soap in uh, shapes for children. Like in this case, it's a flower or um, or a, a paw print. So something interesting to keep the kids interested. These are beautiful bottles that um, can, can, again, withstand many, many cycles, can remain in your bathroom for you know months and months, uh, but you'll be continually refilling them with uh, the, the package on the left. And the package on the left is actually, uh, it is plastic. Uh, it's a flexible stand-up pouch for the hand wash. Um, uh, so it, it, it provides purports to use, let me look at my notes here, uh, the system reduces packaging by more than 85% compared to rigid uh, packaging. Uh, and what's interesting is the bottle for life is HDPE, but the MyCurie replacement uh, film pouches are actually uh, in line with TerraCycle. So uh, somebody can use them, refill their forever bottle or their for life bottle, and then they can send them back by mail uh, free of postage to TerraCycle and TerraCycle is able to then uh, reuse that 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 film pouch, that stand-up film pouch. So again, a, another interesting example. Consumer education is key. You have, these consumers need to know how to use it. So uh, I think we have a few other examples of that coming up, right, Paul? Okay. So yeah, what I particularly like about this is not just the consumer piece, uh, consumer education, but also the fact that they're supporting the changes through talking about the, the percentage reduction in plastic and things like that. So they're not just making the changes; they're actually supporting that with some evidence of, of why it's a a good thing from a sustainability point of view. Uh, so next up is uh, French beauty and skin skincare brand uh, Locatane, um, and they've announced the launch of a range of plastic-free alternatives to traditional liquid-based products that are usually packed into single-use plastic containers. Now, the whole word, word or phrase single-use plastic has, has been a hot topic over the last uh, two to three years, and, and that certainly continues. Uh, the new range includes solid soap and shampoo bars and is expected to appeal to environmentally aware consumers uh, as well as people on the go. Uh, the new range is also vegan and all the soap and shampoo variants are manufactured using 95% natural environmentally safe ingredients um, as well as being 95% biodegradable. The soap is available in, in three different scents. Um, the, the soap bars are priced at uh, nine pounds, which I guess is about 13, 14 uh, US dollars, whilst the shampoo bars retail at about 10 pounds, which I guess is about 14 uh, US dollars. Uh, a metal storage tin is, is also available for purchase, uh, and the outer packaging is 100% paper-based and recyclable in the normal uh, waste paper stream. What's interesting about this is that we're, you know, many of the innovations that we're now tracking are, are, are nods to the past. You know, we've got the reusable examples, which is, 
in looking back at um, uh, reusable milk bottles, and here we have something like a, a solid soap bar, which uh, uh, our, our older uh, parents and grandparents would have been using in, 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 in yesteryear. Um, the, the other thing interesting about this is that you know taking water out of the supply chain to to um, take out the complexity of packaging uh, and also reduce costs as well so that, that's quite an interesting example very premium looking product but very much a nod to the past as well um, next up um, Unilever in the US have launched its uh, Dove body wash in again a reusable and refillable format consumers have the choice of uh, two different options uh, to choose from the, the more expensive option is the Dove reusable aluminium bottle and body wash concentrate which is priced at uh, just under 15. US dollars and is comprised of a, an aluminium bottle plus a squeezable concentrated body wash, which is uh, a four ounce uh, bottle that is four times concentrated and when diluted with water makes up 16 ounces of body wash. Again, another example of effectively taking water out of the supply chain and, and adding it at the last at the, at the moment uh, of consumption. The body wash concentrate a bottle uses 50% less plastic, again, communicating that plastic reduction message. 50% uh, less plastic than, than a standard bottle and is made importantly from recycled plastic. Uh, the other option is um, Dove reusable bottle and body wash concentrate which has a recycled reusable plastic bottle along with a concentrated body wash uh, and retails for uh, $9.99. The refill concentrates, um, both formats are available in, in three cents and um, what I particularly like about this, again it's bang on trend in terms of uh, encouraging usage of, of, of refillable and reusable uh, packaging, but I like the fact that they've got, they've they've done it as a, as a set uh, because consumers need education. Consumers need to know um, what they you know how to uh, navigate this this sector. This is new to them. This is different to what they've done before. So Dove and Unilever have tried their very best to uh, to, to do it like a duo pack like this to really get consumers um, set them on their path to to hopefully be a long term consumer of this this packaging format yeah that's that's a good point in setting them up to succeed and we won't belab belabor this any further because clearly uh you know dove and unilever are 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 um uh, way out in front in this case this is this is a a deodorant pack that's a stainless steel pack reusable and then the refill in this case is that's f is in an fsc certified uh carton board so uh but but unilever and dove uh, seem to get it um this is again that circular model um, consumer education is key to make sure that people succeed early on in this because if they don't know what they're doing and they can't figure it out then that results in waste and rate and waste results in you know it, it works against the sustainability goals that we're trying to, to accomplish anyways. Um, next up is uh, the US arm of Colgate Palmolive and they aim to move their Colgate toothpaste tubes into recyclable materials so this is another packed format that has come under pressure over in recent times for its seemingly less um, lack of, of recyclability. So the new material will be a multi-layer but mono material manufactured from HDPE, high density polyethylene, commonly used for things like detergent bottles, milk jugs, and vitamin bottles, things like that. Initially they found that the HDPE uh, was a little too stiff to be able to squeeze the toothpaste out, so quite an important uh, factor, but after five years of development, so these things don't come overnight, and often it takes a long time to get to a point where the product, the packaging is uh, suitable for, for use. Uh, they arrived at a blender of different types of HDPE, including one which would allow them to remove, importantly, allow them to remove the aluminium layer to make it the pack recyclable. The cap will be made of polypropylene, so in some cases, depending on, on, the, on the system in place, it will need to be removed from the tube, um, really depending on local recycling guidelines. Leftover toothpaste in the tubes is said not to be an issue, as it is water soluble and will be washed out during the recycling process. So Colgate expects every single tube in its portfolio to be recyclable in the United States by next year and globally by 2025. So that is fighting tour. That is not moving slowly, that is really uh, going for it and um, solving a, a long-standing uh, challenge of, of a lack of recyclability. Yeah, and what's really interesting about, I mean, there's multiple things that are interesting about that project, but one thing that's interesting about it is that Colgate aims to share that technology um, you know, the tube, as you mentioned itself, the tube and the, the, the closure is polypropylene. The tube 
is uh, different varieties, high density and low density of uh, polyethylene, including EVOH. So that's instead of aluminum or aluminum, depending on what side of the pond you're on, uh, EVOH uh, would be your barrier layer for you know gas and, and, and gas ingress, that sort of thing. Um, so they're able to do it, but I think uh, it's best said by Todd, uh, Tom Heelslip, and he told us at, uh, at Packaging World about a year ago, so this is slightly dated, but uh, they realized early on that uh, they weren't going to be able to get to the sustainability goals by themselves because even though they are the uh, toothpaste giant or one of two to three toothpaste giants, um, you know, you know, they by themselves, they say, would, wouldn't be a drop in the bucket. So they said, this is a quote from Tom. He said, from day one, it was never about Colgate having a recyclable tube. It was about the industry having a recyclable tube. If, Cold, if Colgate did it alone, it wasn't going to move the needle with regard to uh, tubes getting recycled. So I, we're not sure yet whether that looks like a licensing model. I don't believe that's the case. It's definitely work with the supplier. So not necessarily their competitor brands, but with the suppliers in general to push folks towards that model of uh, general different types of uh, polyethylene, high density and low density stuff with the barrier being EVOH and trying to get the market and the, um, the tube manufacturers, the, the the converters that are making the tubes and selling it to the brands to get on board with this variety, possibly using some of the technology or some of the know-how that uh, Colgate has developed. Because once they see that Colgate has gone the polyethylene with EVOH uh, route, then they can see it, that their, their company secrets are sort of being worn on their sleeve in a sense. Uh, but uh, they're really definitely trying to push the industry that way. Another Colgate example, as long as we're talking about toothpaste here, is, uh, is Elixir. And Elixir is actually a PET bottle. Now, PET with toothpaste long sounded uh, like an impossibility because uh, PET is at least semi-rigid. Even thin PET is going to be a rigid bottle, and this Elixir is, is no example or is no exception. But in this case, there's a unique um, coating called liquid, liquid glide that was a slippery coating that was applied on the inside of the container. And you'll note that it's a it's a um, transparent PET bottle. So the toothpaste is in there. Uh, consumer is able to extract every last bit of uh, toothpaste because of that slippery uh, liquid glide layer on the inside. And we all have had the experience, you know, maybe maybe in years past of trying to get every last little ounce of toothpaste out of the tube. And the, also the experience of waste, which is, uh, you know, very familiar with consumers right now. Product waste, food waste, these sorts of things very much work against what uh, these sustainability models are trying to achieve. So uh, by eliminating or virtually eliminating waste and also uh, keep staying within the uh, easily recyclable realm of PET, uh, Colgate is going another route here with, a, uh, with an interesting stand-up, semi-rigid type of pack for toothpaste. And that puts a bow on everything. That brings us to the conclusion of the webinar, all the time that we have. Um, naturally, if you'd like to learn uh, anything more about what we've discussed or like to discuss more with us, uh, visit the websites that you see on your screen right now. Use the email addresses um, to contact Paul or I. That's all the time that we have for today, Sustainability Today.